so in yesterday's lecture we were talking about uh, tribal literature right so uh, more or less we talked about their historical uh, you know historic uh, their the historical narratives and e even we you know touched upon few uh, mythological narratives and then we talked about their cultural heritage their festivals and uh, the whole construction of tribals in the colonial india and even the present time right and uh, even we talked about the criminalization and the typical you know stereotyping of the tribals that how they are portrayed to be the criminals even we discussed about the you know, scheduled tribes how they are uh, listed and even we talked about that how it was difficult right to get listed and there are so many tribes that are even you know uh, that are even beyond the domain of the scheduled tribes right so there are a lot of tribes right that are still you could say unknown and you know uh, they are st still not in the domain of the scheduled tribes so that we can you know reach to them or even uh, we, we can give them some kind of of you could say privilege or any kind of, you know and any kind of a freedom right so even we talked about centrelease right so i hope uh, till now you have got enough idea about the tribals right so today we are going to discuss two uh, uh, texts first is the uh, mother forest uh, and second is uh, a poem by Nirmala Putal, right? So, first of all, I would like to start with the Mother Forest, right? So, uh, Mother Forest is an autobiography by C.K. Janu, right? So, C.K. Janu is actually an Adivasi. She belongs to the Adya tribe, right? So, Adya tribe, so definitely they were also, you know, they belongs to the tribe. They were the forest dwellers, the indigenous, the, you know, we can say they were the actually Dravidians, right? So, we talked enough about the indigenous communities and the Dravidians and the whole uh, Aryan invasion theory and how they themselves got displaced in their homeland right so they were the you know they, they got displaced they, they they were scattered here and there and on the other hand they they were totally you know they are dehumanized at the hands of the 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 the, the migrants that came from the other land right so we, we will be discussing about the few autobiographical you know incidents and narratives about uh, the ck janu and she was actually trying to portray the plight of the tribals right and you are not even she is portraying the plight of the tribals but on the other hand she is also you know questioning the place of the tribals in the independent india and especially in the terms of a tribal woman right so as a tribal woman she was actually you know, uh, you know portraying as we have already talked about dalit woman right so uh, in, in the bama right so by the bama sangati so we got to know that how she is the dalits of the dalits so here we will be talking the same discourse right we will be talking the same idea that how the tribal women they are actually the, you know they they, they are the the, the lower the, they are at the lowest position right that the how they are the depressed of the depressed right so it, it is an autobiographical account so we will be definitely having a first-hand experience of the tribal life and she was discussing about everything and definitely the title right the mother forest so she was you know the the two terms are uh, you know uh, these two terms are enough to you know uh, to feel the first-hand contact or the intimacy you know the tribal share with the the forest with the nature right so as the title says right the mother forest right so it is very clear that the tribals and especially and there she is definitely talking from the point of view of a tribal woman right so uh, the two women that we are going to talk about that is uh, the same uh, uh, the autobiography of ck janu and the another one is nirba putal right so definitely we will be studying two uh, tribal narratives from the uh, point of view of tribal women right so even we have discussed uh, the point when we were talking about the eco uh, eco feminism right so uh, and even even the first lecture i mentioned that how women and the tribal and the dalits right so they are on the same plane when we were talking about the exploitation and even when it comes to the nature as well right so like the nature the patriarchal order the patriarchal capitalistic order you could say so the word vivastha was definitely a petri you know, a capitalistic mindset right so it, it portrays the capitalistic mindset mindset so such kind of a capitalistic mindset has you know in, in not even invaded the uh, mother earth the nature the women and the lower caste and classes and on the other hand enslaved them as well right so they use the natural resources to their own uh, you know convenience and their own value same goes with the women as well right so they snub their rights and you know put them into the four walls so that they can be a, a servants of the patriarchal order right so same way we can feel that that the tribal women and the women right when we were talking about women and specifically when we were talking about the tribal women that she is much more closer to the nature 
right? She has a close contact with the nature. So because we know it very well that women are often associated with the, uh, you know, the, the benevolent force. You, we were talking about the warmth, affection, love and care. The same, uh, you know, same characteristics. You could say she has drawn from the nature, right? So the nature is also benevolent, right? So we have the abundance. We have the bounties of flora and fauna in the nature. And on the other hand, you know, nature, nature is the ultimate provider, right? So this was the reason the, you know, CK Janu, he, she is actually referring to, you know, forest, the nature as the mother, right? So she is definitely a benevolent force, like a mother. She is actually a provider. She is a provider. She is a rescuer. She is all providing, right? And we really need that warmth, love, care, right? And the, and on the other hand, the salient features of even women as well, right? So in the patriarchal order, in the capitalistic mindset, people used to say that they are, you know, emotionally weak, they are jittery, they are hysterical as, uh, you know, Sigmund uh, Freud uh, tried to portray the hysteria in, in the women, right? So they are hysterical, they are emotionally weak, but on the other hand, they are, these, these are definitely, you know, a kind of constructions given by the man in order to, you know, in order to uh, make uh, a tip, 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 uh, typical image of the woman but on the other hand uh, yes shushmita uh, ma'am mother uh, mother forest is an autobiography yes mother forest is an autobiography she was talking about her own experiences her own relation with the forest that was the reason she named that a uh, mother forest right so, so she was talking about her own tribal life how she spent you know uh, her childhood in the forest and how she has himself you know, she has herself seen the exploitation of the forest in front of her eyes and she was recording all her incidents right the prime incidents of uh, her life i hope this much is clear shushmita do you have any other question no ma'am okay so uh, then we have uh, we were talking about the mother forest right so we were talking about the you know, construction of the woman right but on the other hand instead of you know uh, uh, feeling or representing women in a negative light that how she can be the structures or uh, you know uh, somebody who is hysterical and emotionally weak jittery so you could say that the the basic qualities that the woman you know the the, the woman they derived right the affectionate the warmth the, you know the love the humility that is from the nature itself right so this is how ck janu she feels much more at ease when she was in the you know she was in the nature and she was trying to you know bring the contact and with the help of this autobiography she really wants to challenge right she really wants to challenge this you know the power for you know power structure the power dynamics of the you know you could say capitalistic order or you could say the patriarchal society and even she tries to question the independent democratic country as well that though we are progressing you know towards the uh, you know you towards the independent india democratic india democratic country where we all are equal and democracy you know promotes and guarantees uh, you know uh, equality and justice and freedom to all but on the other hand they got themselves you know they got displaced from their own house from their own homeland and she feels that uh, that she is actually you know she she is actually turned away from uh, her own mother right so this, that was the reason that she dedicated uh, you know the whole narrative and uh, recording uh, her own incidents her own uh, you know a few of the first hand experiences in the nature, right? So basically, CK Janu, as I have already told you, that she is actually an Adivasi. She belongs to the Adya tribe, right? So Adyas, we know it very well that all the tribals were definitely the forest dwellers peoples. We have you know talked enough about their historical and cultural background yesterday that how they were the forest dwelling, you know, dwelling tribes, or you could say they were the indige indigenous communities or the Dravidians living in the lap of the nature following paganism and they have their own you know folklore and they have their own festivals they have their own narratives away from the you could say the aryan or you could say aryan and christianity but uh, then we got to know that uh, uh, she but on the other hand so because of the invasion of the aryans and because of the invasion of the colonial masters right to the india uh, they got, uh, you know, exploited. They 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 got dehumanized, and how they they got bonded to to, to the wills of the you know colonial masters and to the patriarchal heads, and they were turned to the laborers right so they were basically acting as the laborers so we, we have talked about this point when we were talking about the dalits that how they were the artisans and they forced tribals to become their laborers because they were full of force you know full of force and strength and vigor so this was the reason that these people they they really want to exploit their strength and vigor to satisfy their own selfish interests right so they were actually a tribe 
forest dwelling tribe but in the other hand uh, they were pushed to the peripheries and they were transformed to agricultural laborers and uh, uh, then we were talking about the CK Janu that how uh, she was an uh, Adivasi and she was living, you know, belonging to the other community of the Vyanar. Basically, the whole narrative that she was actually talking about the Vyanar. You must have heard of the place, uh, Shishmeta Vyanar, that is a very popular tourist destination in the Kerala, right? So whenever anybody was talking about Kerala, so they used to visit Vyanar, right? And even the Vyanar is forest, uh, you know, forest, uh, and on the other hand, the tourist places, Kerala is a definitely a very charming, uh, charming uh, place, which attracts so many tourists in the name of, you know, in the name of greenery, flora and fauna, and in the name of abundance of the nature, right? So the same way she was talking about that, how they were the tribals, they were the, you know, ultimate inhabitants of the Vyanars, but because of the selfish motive of promoting tourism and, you know, uh, to in order to have control, by the government and taking forest area under their uh, under their control right in order to make the whole thing as a reserve forest so they pushed them to the peripheries and they ultimately made them agricultural laborers and on the other hand they pushed them to the territory of you know starvation and death even right so i hope this much is clear yes ma'am right and uh Sikha Janu, as we have already, you know, talked about that how she was an Adivasi, but on the other hand, she, uh, when we were talking about her uh, life story, so she, uh, she didn't get any kind of a formal education, right? Because as we, she belongs to a tribe, but on the other hand, she got, uh, you know, few uh, little knowledge from the campaigns, right? So what happened is when we got freedom, right? So though the, you know, the liberation and emancipation of the tribal work was, you know, done and glorified and promoted vigorously by the, you know, uh, the, by the democratic India. And there were a lot of campaigns, right? The education campaigns where they will be teaching the basic numeracy. They will be teaching basic numeracy. They were uh, they will be teaching how to write their name, basic alphabets and the numeracy. And there were special campaigns. So she educates uh, educated herself during that campaigns and uh, she got a little uh, no uh, knowledge about you know uh, her community and everything and she really wants to you know work for the uh, emancipation and detriment of the uh, you know uh, that is adya adya tribe and uh, even she joined when we talking about her uh, you could say uh, her life story even she joined cpm that is the communist party of uh, india Marxist party, right? So it was actually a uh, kind of, a, uh, you could say, uh, uh, currently active party in the uh, in, in the Kerala politics. So, so even she joined Communist Party of India in order to, you know, uh, in order to work for the reclamation of the lost land, the lost lands that 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 were actually, you know, uh, uh, that were forcefully taken at the hands of the, you know, Adivasis and especially the uh, uh, their tribe in the Kerala. But on the other hand, we know the, the harsh realities of Indian political system, and especially when we were talking about the political parties, right? And how Indian politics is termed to be the game of the scoundrels, right? Because every party here is talking about their own selfish interest. Their only motive is to exert more and more power and authority over the whole of the system, right? So instead of building a democratic country, right? So this was the reason when she joined the party, though she was actively involved in the workings of the party, but very sooner she got disillusioned by the workings of the party when she clearly saw that how party's interest was not in the favor of the tribals, right? So they really want to exert their power over the Kerala. They really want to make a regional party and then they want to transform that party on the national level. So their whole concerns was nationalistic and that was just to you know, grab the power like any other party. When we, we were talking about any other party of the you know contemporary India, all parties are same. Right. So more or less, we, you know, whenever we talk. So when she got the real picture, so uh, after being disillusioned, uh, she quit from that party. And on the other hand, then she joined her career or became a social activist. Right. And from that time, it, she was active as a social activist and she was you know as a writer as well to his autobiographical accounts and by the critical writings she was talking about she is writing and talking about the rights and emancipation of the tribals and especially in the in the concern of the aditya uh, so adya sorry adya community right so this is all about ck janu let's start with the uh, the novel. So the novel, right? The Mother Forest. So as the title is already clear to you that she was actually talking about the 
the the, the forests there are forests of uh, kerala and especially the wayanads forest right so wayanads forest are lush green abounds in the flora and uh, fauna and it was very rich part of right uh, even, even the you know the house and abode of the home and uh, abode of the wildlife uh, as well but on the other hand uh, mother forest is actually an autobiographical account and there are few things that she mentioned about you know the, the plight of the tribals and especially the plight of the tribal women right so it is a very small book hardly contains the 56 pages and first it was published in malayalam right so based the the popular language of the kerala right but on the other hand then it got translate and when we were talking about the mother forest so here she was talking about wayanad right so wayanad kerala's part wayanad right and and uh, there she was actually giving the authentic representation right so the the lives and conditions of the people right so in a way she is not at all you know though she was talking uh, about the autobiographical elements right so she was actually you know, talking about their own life experiences giving us first hand experience uh, of the life of the tribal and especially in the concern of the tribal women but when we read the autobiography we will get to know that how she is rewriting the narrative right on the other hand when we you read from the point of view of political party and from the you know from the history of kerala you got to know that how kerala got emancipation you know highest literacy rate they are promoting tourism they have so many things to offer as a, you know uh, in the, in in the whole in the whole map of india but on the other hand when you read about uh, you know uh, her writing and her incidents and her first hand experience the intimacy she she is going to you know, talk about uh, in the autobiographical account so it is going to be like she is rewriting the narrative right she is actually challenging the historical or the political discourses and she is actually you know you know countering the representatives right so the basically the representative what they actually pose that that how we are doing so much right for the emancipation of the tribes we are holding this much for example we have given you the example of uh, uh how they were given the education you know the, the small education camps were uh, even uh, arranged but on the other hand even their children right the children uh, from the these tribes were forcefully taken uh, on the name of that they will be put into the good hostels and where they will be given the good education and uh, you know they they have the you know the mahem of uh, reservation that how you will get the good job you will have a good uh, you know uh, lifestyle and you will you know you will also flourish and thrive in the you know concept of the independent india you will enjoy social justice uh, equality and of freedom but on the other hand when we were talking about her narrative and we will got to know that how how it was all about the false promises right it was also about the false promises that the modern state right so as we have even discussed yesterday that the modern state when we were talking about the modern state you know the government or the governmental bodies that they are a legacy of the colonial masters right so they are just the legacy of the colonialism so the same thing we we got to know that from her writing that how all are the false promises that were handed down to the lives of the uh, tribes and uh, by uh, you know by the autobiographical account there is also one very uh, you know uh, the salient feature is that that it is not just about the you know imaginative writing it is not just fictitious by being autobiographical because she was talking about the first hand experiences the very own experiences the very own narratives the personal accounts right the personal uh, experiences and events right so it it gives you a, a it gives you a, a more, much more broader picture of the social and political uh, social and political structure of the wayana and especially in the, in the uh, uh, in the concern with the kerala right so basically when we talk about the narrative structure so we have already discussed that how she is uh, how she is actually you know writing an autobiography and giving the or you know account an autobiographical account and definitely she so she was actually you know talking in a, a recollective way so, so she is a grown up woman now and she was actually you know reminiscing about uh, you know her life in the forest that how she was a kid how she was a baby and how she was you know living in the forest so the whole mode was in the form of a recollection she was recollecting things right from the past and the early experiences that how you know she, how much close she was from the she 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 was uh, with the nature and how they were living happily in the lap of the nature and uh, you know even the second chapter talks about what we were you know even uh, discussing yesterday the aryan invasion theory right so she, she, she was you know uh, roughly mentioning that that how these land lords right the land lord communities came and on the name of you know having more and more control over the land in order to you know grab more and more footing and to rise in the social status in the society so they 
got hold of their land and they looted them and the whole in, in you know Aryan invasion theory and being the Dravidians so they were the very polite people they were very generous and very humble people because they live in the lap of nature they don't know trickery they don't know manipulation they don't know that uh, they don't you know believe in any kind of exploitation so they were very simple people you know very uh, righteous people so they got easily tricked by these people right and how just on the basis of a uh, different color and on the name they were exploited and they were rooted and they were even rooted out from their own homelands and now the, the even the concept of the homeland becomes a kind of an alien idea for them like when we talk about you know the the uh, migrant literature right so when we were talking about the migrants so they were actually becoming the migrants in their own country right the same uh, in order to make you understand i would also like to quote one more example right so during the lockdown period you must have seen that right the kind of the condition right the deplorable condition of the migrant workers in the different states right they were actually the you know the legal legal citizens of the india right so they were the first citizens of the india and how they got displaced and how they were running around in their own state so they were treated to be the migrants they were treated to be the aliens nobody you know nobody come forward to help them especially on the name of you know the modern state we were talking about the different agencies of the state that how they got displaced in their own land so they were actually you know they really want to reclaim their land they really want to reclaim their home they want to go back to their home and that home was there in their own country it was not somewhere on the you know on the mars on the moon it was it was just talking about the simple facilities that they want at the, from, from the hands of the government when the government was actually taking such a big decisions like the lockdown of a democratic country but then when we were talking about the lockdown of a such a big populated country you know so, so they were actually asking for their own you know, the, the, an urge to go back to home and how they were, you know, aliens in their own life, right? Uh, any, a, anything you want to say, Shushmita? No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so, so I hope this would be clear that the same, same condition, the same plight that Sitejanu, right? So she, yes. she wants to highlight in the whole narrative that that being the natives and the, when she was talking about the natives and inhabitants, so she was asserting the points that they were the real inhabitants, they were the true natives of this homeland, and how this homeland was so dear to them and how this homeland is so near dear uh, to uh, them that the intimacy that they share with the nature they treat nature as their mother and father right so we even we discussed about you know the tree rights the forest rights that how they worship nature there was no religion like the you know like uh you know worshiping the supreme god from them for them the supreme god the supreme force is nature right it it, it lies in the forest it, it it lies in the you know rivers it lies in the oceans right so the so they were actually worshiping the supreme force and how they were the real inhabitants and uh being real inhabitants being the you know the you know the natives of the land that the, they were actually the natives of their, their homeland and how they were deprived of their homeland and now they are they are living in the land where are you know termed as scheduled tribes and you know sts we even talked about that how it was difficult for them to get the caste certificate you know the, the tribal certificate done and on the other hand how they were actually struggling in their own country somebody will term them as a st and sometimes they will be criminalized we have already talked about Bhutan that how they, you know, they were criminalized in their own country and they were beaten badly, you know, they're treated by the kind of treatment they, you know, have at the hands of the government, right? So in their own country, that how much they are alien, right? And when she was talking about the tribal women, she felt that the plight is much more, right? Because uh, for the tribal women, the kind of intimacy that she has with the children, right? So she feels that the same relationship that the tribal women share with the nature, the twin uh, the relation she shares with the forest as well, right? Like the bond that she shares with her children, right? So she was talking in the form of a recollection. She was recollecting few childhood experiences, early experiences, the life that she was living in the forest, right? And the you know in in the uh, in the lap of the nature, right? So 
and she was talking about the intimate relationship that she has on the other hand there are few chapters when she was you know basically talking about the few bushes particular kind of trees particular kind of flowers right so we are here we can you know here we are sitting we can just simply imagine but on the other hand you know so definitely they they are actually living in a very you know peaceful coexistence they were showing you know uh, they were actually having a harmonious relationship with the nature so the, she was talking about the intimacy that you know, tribals have with the forest tribals have with the nature and especially the tribal women have with the nature right because it was the tribal women right so we, we even talked about even dalit women as well right that how dalit women are more, more much more independent and powerful when compared to the upper caste women because they they because like their men they equally go outside right they go outside they earn their bread they work hard in the fields right so this was the reason that they have a much more broad uh, construction of the society and they know uh, you know the, the construction of the world uh, in a better way right so what the german, german the philosopher was talking about the waldschrank right i hope you will be familiar with the term right the waldschrank is the world view right so world view so that world view you know will be molded by a lot of experiences perceptions and uh, the world view will be only formed by different different kind of experiences and perceptions when a person will be exposed to the world right so so definitely these women the tribal women and the dalit women they have the this waldschrank right they have the broader world view the instead of upper caste women right and she was also talking about the intimacy and harmonious coexistence relationship that uh, you know they shared with the forest and especially tribal women and uh, they were also talking about right that how you know, then she was talking about you know her adult life and how she got you know formal education in the camps and when you know adult life that how she was groomed as a social activist and uh, and when she became the social activist so she so she felt that that uh, she was questioning the ideas of land identity life lively livelihood of tribes and even the culture of the tribes right by quoting few examples so we have already discussed about right that how she was quoting examples of flowers different bushes different kind of trees the kind of you know the kind of wild wild elements that they got afraid afraid of when they were children right so the so so she simply asserts that that the whole narrative is not personal so she even quoted that in one of the interviews that the personal is political so she has quoted that that my own personal experiences are ultimately the political you know political voicing of the the rights and the plight of the tribes right so she said that as a tribal woman right so it is a kind of a, I, as we have already discussed that how literature is giving you know voice to the voiceless so she was actually talking about the you know uh, rights of the tribes and she was talking about the challenging you know role of the state as well that how state is not doing uh, anything in the betterment of the tribes but on the other hand it was the state right who actually pushed these people to the peripheries right and on the other hand uh, it, it it led them right it led them to the it it will definitely lead them to the radical movements and it it will definitely lead them to you know staunchly fight against these uh, the this whole idea of state right so even i have given you the you know whole construction of the adivasi movement that is jal jungle and jameen right so they feel that 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 if you are deprived you know depriving us of the you know basic necessities then then we have to we have to you know make a revolution the same thing we we, we even studied uh, when we were studying the marx right so she, uh, there he was talking about haves and have nots and he said that when there will be too much of exploitation and when have nots will be you know where they will be educated and when they will be aware of the right so there will definitely going to be a revolution and their revolution will be you know the revolution will be called by the have not so it's the, the same the same the, the revolution the adivasis were talking about that they are not going to share their jal jungle jameen with anyone and it is actually their personal right which is not entitled to any kind of a legal or any kind of a you know any kind of a legal or contractual so they were saying that such kind of a customary rights are their personal rights right so they they believe in that so this was the reason that she feels that that the autobiographical account the things that she mentioned in the autobiography it is not just personal it is also political as well right i hope this much was clear yes ma'am right and uh, then she was talking about you know uh, her own path as well right so that how uh, why she was writing this autobiography right so i have already told you that the first you know first uh, chapter was basically about you know uh, her life as a child and then the second chapter was about the you know aryan invasion theory that how she was talking 
about that we are the true inhabitants she, she, and how these people came and invaded our land conquered us and enslaved us and then she was talking about the you know liberation movements that this is how people are you know and then talking about the you know, stereotypical uh, stereotyping of the uh, tribals and how they are stereotyping and then she was talking about her own journey right so that she was you know joined the uh, cpm and she got disillusioned and in the end she she uh, you know she she decided to choose her own path so she, she said that i am not going to you know led or i don't want to follow any path any path right so but on the other hand i will devise my own path and the path that she decided that she devised that was grassroots involvement right so she, she she quit the party and there she really wanted to you know work as a social activist because she believes that you know you know if we really want to work for the emancipation of the tribals if we really want to you know staunchly fight for the rights of the tribals so the only thing is we we really need to you know uh, we really need to strike personal contact and we really need to do the grassroots politics right the grassroots involvement is must right so definitely a very uh, you could say a very good point that she mentioned in the autobiography because most of the you know parties of india political parties of india failed because of failed because of this reason because they don't you know they don't have grassroots knowledge right so this, this was the reason that she chose her way as a social activist because she believes in the idea of grassroots involvement and uh, you know definitely the personal interaction one to one interaction with the tribes and while living with the inter you know, tribal so she was like i will live in the i will live with my people and then i will you know fight uh, for my people i will you know uh, raise my voice for my people rather than joining a political party rather than being a part of any kind of a party which doesn't pay you know much attention to their rights and their focus was uh, uh, you know uh, about the control and coercion of the uh, system right so this was the reason that when you read her autobiography i recommend you if you have a time you must read because it just consists of 56 pages that's it right so it was simply a short narrative and on the other hand and when you read the story you feel that that how for whole of the story uh, she uh, you know she was talking uh, in the voice of i right as a first person narrative and there the i was not capital right she used i in the lower case right so by using i in the lower case by using i as a small i not a capital i right so it was definitely you know it was definitely uh, you could say fighting or you know sh shunning the colonial colonial uh, narrative structure right so because uh, you I, i guess you must be familiar about the idea of i in the colonial structure shishmita how do you perceive i in the colonial structure no ma'am okay so when we talk about the english right uh, even when we talk about you must have heard of the, of the you know the origin of the uh, you know the english right so it it, it came so we have the three tribal people right so uh, yes. the germanic tribes right the angles yes, angle saxons and the you know, yes right? uh, and the dukes as well right so the basically the english comes from the angles right so they were the fishermen basically the fishermen tribes were there and from anglers right so angler is the fishermen from angler it become anglers and it 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 becomes a whole world as an english so basically it is a fisherman's language right so the the invading tribes right so the main tribes right in the german tribes that uh, you know they came to the land of your you know europe when we talk about the mid when we talk about the english right the origin of the you know the english and the the whole construction of the you know english when, when it got you know, more and more part the colonial structure that uh, i i the, the if, if you notice that we, we always use i in the capital right we, they always used to donate i in the capital right because they believe that i i has to be capital because we 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 are superior i i by being i capital it, it is actually the assertion of the supremacy that we the white race are superior so i i am the best i am the superior right so i i is the you know you could say it, it is the superlative degree what we have in the degrees right the comparative and the superlative so they feel that we are the best we are the best race why we are the best race because we are white right so we are white so this was the reason that we used to donate i always capital same goes with the god right so we used to you know when we write god we used to have g capital all the time because the 
believe in the idea of one god right so one god and they believe that i has to be capital because our god is the ultimate god our god is the you just have one god the whole creator of the universe that is our god right that is the ultimate father of the universe so that is the god and god is the best among the all the other things on the other hand we you know uh, uh, when we were talking about even the three constructions of you know first person second person and third person right uh, in, in the english grammar as well right so from them i is i always fall under the first person so we have the construction of first person so first person consists of two that is i because whenever right uh, i will definitely talk about myself right so when whenever it, it, it would be about the first preference the first preference will definitely given to me so first person is i and second is we because somewhere in we i am also involved so that i is all the time you know all the time involved in the we as well right so this was the reason in the construction of first person we have i and we and in the construction of the second person we have you you or your right so then they were talking about the second right the, the the second people that is in front of them right so the, the the whom they really want to assert the control so i is the occident western idea right the westerners they believe that we are you know, we are white we are civilized we are refined we have a religion right we have christianity we have church and we are the best in the world because of the color and because of the you know because of the force and supremacy we the enjoyed and then you know, oriental oriental part of the world the eastern countries where, where, where you know they, because uh, the uh, second second preference that will be given to you because i really want to manipulate you i really want to exploit you i really want to grab something from you in the betterment of me right so this is the construction of you and on the other hand the third person is definitely he she you know he she it so any anything right so that is away from the eyes that is not my concern right so that is away from my uh, me and away from my eyes right so these all are the colonial practices and there we got to know that even language right so how language is also a politicized weapon and how even language can be politicized this was the reason that she the ck janu so she was actually you know first of all she was actually using i in the lower case because she is actually you know debunking the colonial practices right she was debunking yes. the colonial supremacy and on the other hand she is also using i that that also symbolizes that that it is not just about my battle that i'm right you know i'm writing and fighting for me myself my interest and for my selfish motives so this i is very humble right so this i in a humble way it 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 creates a collective interest rather than a selfish interest i hope uh, it, it makes sense now yes ma'am right and e even when we talk about you know different in a contrast when we talk about the sanskrit right so uh, when we have the same construction we have the first second and third person in the sanskrit language as well right so in, in english grammar we have first second third even the construction of the helping verbs as well so we we never use any kind of a s or e as any kind of a helping verbs with the i it is always i write i do i yes. run i eat and even with the we because we are there to support you so this is the reason you don't need any kind of a helping verbs with the we and i and same goes with you you don't need any kind of a helping verb because i am there i am there to support you right so this this support system the, the assertion or you could say this kind of you know benevolent advice this benevolent support is actually a form of manipulation right it is actually a form of manipulation so this is how yes. you can see you know the whole history of east india and the you know east india company in the india that on the name of support on the name of the trade and commerce east india company came to india and how they conquered and looted us right so the same thing so a, he, and on the other hand he she it they need help right so this is the reason that it goes she eats he dances right so in this way they need the construction of the helping verb as well right and when we were talking about you know so they believe that god right so their god is great but on the other hand they believe that okay so you have so many gods and goddesses but we don't want to you know make your god as the ultimate god so this is the reason they used to you know in order to you know get some kind of you know, you know say kind of a benevolent uh, as a benevolent gesture because we are very civilized and refined people so they used to put an extra a so let's say lord rama you know lord krishna so right so the extra a so small a is a kind of a benevolent 
you could say a benevolent support that they they, they profess that they have given you and they respect you on the you know you and your religion right so such as the construction of the language that even how language is also politicized and language is the ultimate you know reflection of the ideology of that time that may if we study from the marxist point of view so we were talking about the language and when we in, in in the sanskrit we have the different construction right the same construction what we were talking about you know uh, first person second person third person so in sanskrit we have pratham purush madhyam purush and uttam purush so pratham purush is first person madhyam purush is definitely the second and the uh, third person is the uttam purush right the third people and on the other hand the, the construction is totally different what we use a uh, first person i and we so here if you read sanskrit so the first person is sah right so with two bindis that are termed to be the visargik the sah is vah vah right the vah the construction of he and she right because we live in such kind of a sanskrit you know we have such kind of a culture and heritage we live in such kind of a uh, you know a kind of a culture that we 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 used to put you know third person over us right so in all the religions right so by now they all profess that the welfare of the all right so so, so it is all about right the putting someone else before us right not even me and not even you know anybody that is related to me so the first first person so in, in sanskrit the first concept of the pratham purush is It is this sah that is vah that is he she it and then the madhyam purush the madhyam purush is same in the English uh, that was the second person that is the you that is tum tum and then came the uttam purush the uttam purush is definitely the uh, the first person that what we have the uttam purush is ahem or mum that is ahem means uh, me and mum means mera right so you can see the whole you know clear contrast between the Orient and Occidental. language right the, the basic constructions of the uh, oriental languages and the you know the, the the construction of the basic structures like the uh, push and in, in the persons right and same goes in order to make this things clear i would like to also quote one example that even you can talk about you know from the dining habits as well right so even uh, when, when we talk about the you know oriental discourses and when we will talk about their their idea of having dinner so they all sit uh, on dining table and and and, and when they start eating so the serving starts from their own self right the person will uh, the person will put uh, will put the uh, food in, in in his or her plate and then the then he or she pass the bowl right so it is a very common kind of a practice you must have seen in the movies or even in the television and they were uh, even in it is a very common practice of eating and dining uh, of you know of of the uh, europeans and we, we when we were talking about the you know indians and when we were talking about the asians basically right so here the practice is we always you know used to serve the guest first whenever we invite somebody from the you know, for the dinner and whenever there will be a party you know when we were dining together so the first of all the guest will eat first right the guest will eat and then they, they then comes the you right so the idea of the construction of vah as the first per person and the second person will be you somewhere the people who are there and on the other hand in the end i will eat right the, those who are the women those who are cooking the mother the construction of the i who she who was actually you know putting the, you know so much in the kitchen, and she was cooking all the dishes with so much you know uh, uh, with all the hard work and you know sweating all around the uh, day so she will eat in the end so that you could see the kind of you know orient and occident practices that how different they are and not even in the languages even their but you know even their practices the common practices where it is going to be dining and even their way of donating themselves right by using i in the capital letter so 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 it, it talks about you know their mindset it, it talks about that how they they, they used to assert supremacy over other right so the prime motive is to assert supremacy over other i hope this much is clear yes ma'am right so this was the reason that that here she was using i in the lower case right so i so, so i hope this point is clear and then she was talking about other females as well right so there are you know a little bit of, uh, you you got to know small mentions of other other people as well she was talking about her own friends right the women that they, she shared you know a close bonding with them on the other hands right so these are the people who were there you know some somewhere as as their you know as they they were childhood friends and sometimes they were supporting 
pushing each other even even when she she became social activist so here she was actually talking about the togetherness of the women and the, the close bonding of the women that you cannot see in any kind of other literature right except the tribal literature on the other hand even if you read you know the, the even, even if you read the vedic literature even if you read british literature even you read uh, american literature the same construction of the othering of the women right so where there will be a complete two different women right so one is very much ideal and the other one is totally a home wrecker or a, uh, you know, a seductress right so these two binaries are definitely there even when we read about the jane austen right when we read about uh, or Jane Austen, and even we read about you know uh, Bronte sisters. You know, we, we were talking about Jane Eyre, right? So Jane Eyre's concept, and we, we have Bertha Mason as well, right? So Jane Eyre is very very ideal woman. On the other hand, Bertha Mason is somewhere like a, you know she was actually lurking like a ghost a spirit, right? So the con contrast between these two women, even if you read about you know stories of the Jane Austen as well, there even you feel that that how women are, you know, the, there will be very smart, witty, intelligent women, but on the other hand, there are women who are very much fleshy right so they were actually you know going behind and running uh, just for the you know material pursuits just for the fleshy things just for the you know they they, they will be very much you know aspirate full of um, ambitions and aspirations and that you know that is to self centered so so that is a complete different kind of aspect of the tribal literature right so in the tribal literature especially the women they were not talking about uh, other women in the negative light right so they were not you know posed as a competitor or you could say you know, they are not even posed as uh, uh, as, as somebody who is the enemy, right? But rather than they were talking about the sisterhood, which is very much, you know, uh, which, which is very much necessary in the world to make this world a better place when we talk about, you know, constructing the, uh, you know, the deconstructing the patriarchal world and even, you know, uh, uh, demolishing of the capitalistic order and for the, you know, and for the protection of the nature that the sisterhood is very much, uh, very much needed. And this was the reason that she was talking about the women characters, all the women characters characters in a very in a very positive light that how the close bonding that they share right so that also talks about you know the ecofeminism the sisterhood but on the other hand it is because of the patriarchal order they really want to exploit women so this was the reason that they posed women against each other they posed women in completely two different binaries and they tried to put women in these binaries so that they will turn against each other right so this can be also the reason right the uh, the construction of the other in the woman right so uh, in the other hand in the tribal literature and especially when you read about the ck genre you'll got to know that she was actually you know talking about other women characters in a in a positive light by talking about sisterhood that sisterhood is definitely you know, needed for the protection of the for for the protection of the mother forest and uh, then she was e e even she shed light on, on, on the construction of the modern state right so she was talking about you know migrants and she was talking about the forest officers as well right so we even already talked about that how she was mentioning the land owning communities right the uh, land owning communities of the south india right so where how they were the actual migrants and they got hold of their land they manipulated them they enslaved them they looted the natural resources to their own good and on the name of you know uh, on, on the name of a capitalistic order and uh, under the guise of somewhere in, on the name of religion somewhere on the name of casteism somewhere on the name of tradition right so they were actually uh, you know using the natural resources using these tribal people to their selfish interest and they are you know they they ultimately you know gave the construction of the you know patriarch patriarchal capitalistic order and they, she uh, talked about the whole migrants right the, the basically the aryans right the land owning communities right uh, in the second chapter and in the in, in the concluding chapters in the last chapters you, even there are mentions of the forest officers as well right so she was talking about the forest uh, official officers that how forest officers are ultimately the reflection of the the modern modern state right so even even the same thing the 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 triangle right the the, the triangle the three-way conflict we talked about yesterday as well when we when i mentioned kantara to you that how the three participating agents in the in power dynamics are the three people that are the tribals the landlord landlord right and the uh, the forest officer moved in her so in the same way she was talking about the forest officers as well that that how forest officers are not you know any not are not given any kind of a support they are not supporting them but on the other hand they are uh, they are the ultimately the 
a reflection of the colonial legacy that how you know colonial masters treated them they you know they, they stereotyped them they pushed them to the peripheries to you know hide in the uh, forest and you know they term them as criminals so same way the forest officers are also you know they they, they don't miss any chance to to us ex, uh, you know exert any control over the people and on the other hand basically they were target they they are targeting the men at first right so these forest officers they were targeting the tribal men right so how they were targeting the tribal men so she gave the you know few incidents there in in the two ways the first of all they did the, these forest officers they tried to bribe them right so you will get this much of money if you got the woods if you got this thing if you you know if, if you involved in the smuggling of the natural resources if you involved in the poachings right so you hunt the wild boars you hunt the wild animals for us and and, and we got it so you know uh, sold in the big markets and will earn money together so the first thing that they, they, they try to manipulate the tribal men right so, and they they diverted the tribal men by the way of bribing them right so so they, the first thing is that right see on the name of money and second thing uh, uh, by you know by, by beating them by, by exerting their control you know by putting them in the police custodies by uh, just you know uh, labeling them a lot of criminal charges that we have already sus uh, you know, started yesterday in the budan that's how she was talking about right so 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 by the way of money by bribing or by way of you know in the police custody so first of all they targeting the tribal men in this way right and we will be talking about this when we were talking about the tribal women right so tribal women we are, have already given you the example of the dropadi right so dropadi by mahashweta devi that how you know in order to exert control over the women the men especially you know the forest officers the, the, the upper caste men are the so called idea of the you know the state the modern state the modern state the government right they how they are exerting control over the women control over the tribal women by you know you, you know by 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 uh, forcefully you know you know to, uh, by forcefully exerting their control over their sexuality right so they, they were raping them they were constant assaults right the same structure you could see that right that how the dalit women suffered at the hand of uh, at the hands of the upper class men they were you know they they, they, they were sexually exploited she was, she was assaulted she was beaten badly the cases of the violence here and there right so the same way right so they were targeting even the tribal women in this way in order to manipulate these people in order to you know silence in order to si silence these people right in order to make these people as a muted individual so that they they will not rise their voice in the uh, in front of government or in in front of others right so this is how the the, the dealing of the forest officers right so that that was there in the forest and uh, even uh, while you know, talking about the forest officers so, so that there, there came the discourse of the uh, you know uh, uh, men as well then they were talking about their own men so as uh, we have already discussed that how you know the forest officers are trying to manipulate them or trying to bribe them then even she she gave a detailed you know account of the tribal men as well so because of the advent of uh, technology communication especially you know the modernization the factory you know the the modernization the mechanization and the urbanization right so there were so many things that going on in the world right so the tribal men especially the construction of the uh, construction of the man when, when he feels that he is not able to serve his family right so also for a man the economic standing in the society or the economic standing in the family is very very much important right he has to be the breadwinner only then he will be respected and when he he can see that because of the you know these riding forces of mechanization you know and the urbanization and the and the modernization that he is not able to earn much he is not able to you know contribute much and he is not able to you know ha have any say in the society so he he got lewd easily he got lewd easily and uh, uh, so and and they will be bribed easily and those people who raise their voice like a very common man like Budan if, if he doesn't want to admit to the atrocities of the you know uh, of the women of, of the uh, forest officers or the police custody right so so he 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 will be you know he will be constantly uh, beaten and the same way so if, if the men uh, they they if the men they they agree you know 
the uh, agree to you know mingle with the forest officers or they agree to mingle with these people so he said that so he, they don't want to go to work and they don't want to you know either you know feed the family and on the other hand like when we were talking about you know dalit feminism so there i there i mentioned the point that how you know the dalit women they feel that that the their, their own men they try to take out their frustration on the women right so the same way ck janu was mentioning that that how tribal women they suffered a lot of domestic violence at the hands of the dalit uh, sorry tribal man right so that how tribal man also try to exert control over right so, so over the women by the, by the force of the you know the might is right right so they, 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 there are a lot of you know she was talking about the domestic violence that even the tribal women serve uh, at the hands of the uh tri tribal men and and because uh, you know they, they were involved they got in easily involved somewhere uh you know by, by the bribing and in in some illegal activities right so the, they they have no sense of you know responsibility they no sense of commitment towards their family towards their women and on the other hand so they they, they were also you know, and they became insensitive they became careless so this was the reason that she was talking about sisterhood or, or, or on a larger structure so she was actually talking about mother forest right that how for is something which which is actually you know which 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 is actually you know has close connotations with the whole idea of the female right with the whole idea of the femininity with the whole idea of the benevolence right so these these th three things right so these three things are intermingled used by the uh, by the author right so she was talking about that how uh, you know she, the more that how women are much more committed to the forest right how women are much more committed to the nature right they don't want to get any kind of a bribe right because the way they are serving their children the same relationship they really share with the nature right so the any kind you know, any kind of manipulation any kind of a bribing or any kind you know any kind of enslaving is not at all possible for the women right because they were much more committed and uh, she will be talking about togetherness of the women right that how it was the women right so the women tribal women they emerged as the they you know, they, they showed the voice of re resilience right so they they emerged as the revolutionaries the ultimate revolutionaries because they showed the uh, resilience right and and they were the actually one who stands for their own rights and for the rights of the forest for the rights of the nature right and uh, the same way right so when we were talking about you know, the, the contrast between tribal man and the tribal woman so for, here we talk from the point of view of power construction so here we feel that that how the, when we were talking about the tribal uh sorry dalit women as well so we, there even we feel that that how dalit woman is is much more independent she she has much more power uh than the upper caste uh, uh women and the dalit man as well right and the same goes with the tribal women right so they they were actually you know going out to fetch wood water uh even food for the children so same way in the forest uh, you know to, to reel in the you know the, the external world to reel in the natural world in order to you know have their things done so same way that they they are independent they they, they are much more committed they are self supportive and moreover they are the empowered women right so they are the most empowered women so this was the reason that she turned herself uh, into an activist a social activist because she believed that the uh, the motive you know for the protection and for the protection of the forest and for the you know protection of the women rights are equally same they have the same connotations in the modern contemporary world right i hope this much is clear yes ma'am right and uh, even when she was talking about uh, you know uh, the few incidents that uh, uh, which shows that that uh, that why she was coming forest as the mother so she was talking about the few things right so she was talking about that how she has yes, yes, she has seen when she was a child that the bushes were burnt by the forest officers in order to clear the land right because the yes. forest you know it very well the forest areas were very dense right and even if we, we go anywhere on the name of you know having the natural retreat right so even you search for the eco homes eco huts so called eco home or eco huts that you know that the, the government is promoting or any tourist place is promoting we we know it very well that definitely it, it is all about the urban encroachment right urban in, 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 in encroachment on the natural land so there is nothing natural and on the other hand in, in man is selfish you know a, a man is so selfish beast that in order to you know in order to have more and more retreat he is you know, he is actually uh you know he is actually you know, not uh, he is he is not leaving any stone unturned right uh, for in his quest 
right to 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 conquer more and more land right so very basic example when we when we talk about you know the beautiful the queen of the hills shimla nowadays people are saying that it it, it is so crowded you must go to kufri people are saying now even kufri is so much crowded you you must go to nalkanda right so so you could see that so we are conquering more and more land right so just for our own retreat because our urban life metro life or urban life is so much you know it 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 it, it, it is so much tormenting for us that we really want a natural retreat we really want a relief we really we really want to escape from the nature and on the on on our escape we we are conquering the land we are invading the resources and we are you know building the resorts we are building tourist places you know and this is all about the exploitation of the nature at the hands of the man so the same way she was talking about as the forest were very dense and on the other hand these people the so called modern man right so modern man the the the, the forces the modern forces of the of the uh, independent uh, state right so because they they are the modern people they they have no idea of the forest right they have no idea of the forest the forest life right the flora flora and fauna they just read in the books that 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 to in the fancy books right they just they just read about the geography geography they just read about the topography they just read about you know the the whole construction of the flora and fauna just from the books so they don't have any idea of, uh, of how to deal with the forest so she so she quoted few example that how bushes got burnt right so they, the forest officers the people they were the burning the bushes in order to clear the road in order to make the road to clear the land right the so called right the atal tunnel we were saying that that was 12 to 15 Kilometers long, utter tunnel, right? The, the, the Rotang Pass that connects the Manali, right? But on the other hand, these such kind of constructions are just you know, the, the example of the you know man's in man's invading or destroying the uh, you know natural world. It is it is it is just the destruction of the forest, right? That's all, right? We we glorify on the name of our technological advancements. We glorify on the name of our upgradation that that we have even reached to the moon. But it, it all tells about the you know selfish motives and selfish interests of the. Of them, right? So she she was talking about such few incidents, and then she was talking about the felling of the trees by the forest officers, right? You know, to make road, you know, to clear the land, right? So they were even even cut the you know the uh, trees themselves, right? So look at the, those people who are the forest officers, right? They are said to be the protector of the forest. Those they themselves were cutting the trees, right? Uh, because they don't have any knowledge about it, right? and then she was talking about her own people that the people right those who are the forest dwelling tribe they become laborers right so in the end they have no choice and in the end they become laborers and all jungles and how all jungles were transformed to forests and especially the forest reserves right the forest area and the mother forest and in very pointy she was talking about a very it just touched my heart when she was talking about it, how mother forest was transformed to the department of forest right so she was saying that it, so you know it very well that it is all about the colonial construction that the mother forest the forest that they respected the forest that they revered they they, they believe that it was the ultimate construction of you know the the lap of the nature where they feel that it, it, it has the love and warmth of a mother the mother forest was transformed to a department of forest right so uh, then uh, as the jungles have transformed to forest and mother form uh, you know forest is transformed into uh, the department of forest so the people these forest tribes right so uh, the basic thing about them when they even when they talking about you know the adivasi movement jal zameen jungle right so they believe that they they have these basic necessities what we were talking about of the dalits right the food cloth and shelter right so the food cloth and shelter they got from the forest right they got the food they got the firewood right they got the shelter and even they got got the cloth as well right because they try to cover their body from the uh, you know the, the, the homemade things and from the, the the leaves and all right so this so, so they don't have to struggle much for the minimum necessities in their life right that was the food shelter and cloth right but on the other hand because of the invade you know because of such invasions by the the the, the modern man the, the land owning classes especially the modern state by the government and by the forest officers so 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 the people the, those who are you know those who have abundant food because they are actually living in the lap of nature they are living in the big forest area because the, and there will be no scarcity of the food in the end the whole construction when the mother forest was transformed into the uh, department of forest They 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 were just left with you know starvation and hunger, 
right the people though the people who who don't have to worry about hunger who don't have to worry about the uh, food right but now because of the injustice of the land uh, lords and because of the you know uh because of the you know the policies the, the policies of the government right so 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 they have to you know they have to you know they have to uh sleep hungry they have to they have to feel the cold right so the basic necessities in order to giving them exposure in order to giving them emancipation in order to give them freedom and equality their basic necessities were even robbed by these people right so in such a way right i would like to conclude my lecture uh, by uh, quoting uh, joseph uh, s nice uh, idea of the soft power right so he, he was actually a post colonial critic and he gave the idea of soft power right so joseph s nai he gave the idea of soft power so soft power is basically an ability when you get yourself done right uh, not by the way of control and uh, you know uh, not by the way of control and coercion on the other hand you get that thing done by you know, by uh, by attracting people right by attracting people to making them believe uh, that they 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 should admire your ideas they should admire your control so the, the idea of soft power is is, is quite uh, you know it has a similar connotation as the althusser's idea of hegemony right so when we were talking about the hegemonic control that there are you know there are a few repressive operatives that, that that are exercised by the state in order to exert control over the people because they really want to create a hegemonic order they really want to create a powerful order right in order to assert power over the powerless so the same way joseph nai's idea was that that the state or the the land owning people or the state they don't want to construct the idea by the you know by the excessive uh, you know uh, excessive uh, 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 profession uh, by excessive uh, exposure of the power they really don't want to show people that they really want to control them right so this was the reason he gave the idea of the soft power rather than a rather than a coercive power rather than a cruel force right so he was saying that it was uh, the whole idea of you know you know stereotyping these people stereotyping these tribal it is actually a way of using the soft power where these people right so these people they they will be lured they will be enticed they will be attracted to their own ideals right you you have to portray a world where you, you make them believe that their ideals for example my selfish motives are much more better ideals then 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 their culture their values then 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 their ideals right so we really want to make them believe that the world we 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 are you know we we are imagining the the ideas i am constructing it, it is in the benefit of, of you right so it, it, it will be equally attractive to you as well right so the same way that how these tribal people they got uh, enslaved because uh, for the tribal men we will be talking about from the tribal men and especially for the tribals education and progressive india right so education progress and equality was more, uh, you could say the the were quite you know alluring ideas right so this was the reason that many of the tribals right so they they got manipulated by the soft power right so they on the name of giving them education as we have already talked about ck jaru that how you know she she got herself educated uh, in a formal you know uh, not, not from a formal school that just learned through basic reading and writing uh, you know campaigns the same way uh, uh, now uh, uh, in the end, right so this when we talk about soft power that how these people right so in order to you know uh, in order to uh, enslave them they, 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 these colonial forces like right, the modern state even though you know like you could say the land owning communities they give them assurance they give them guarantee they they, they give them the promise of education right the education the the, the 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 progress but on the other hand you know by giving these false promises they they they, they actually exploited them like they looted them right and 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 they, they they took them away from the lap of the nature they took them away from their own home and they got alienated in their own land right and on the other hand when we were talking about when when it right and uh, these people right because education right, employment equality was the need of the you know these things were the need of the hour uh, in the progressive india in the indian democratic country right and they were given false promises even we discussed about the idea of reservation we were discussing about the idea of representation as well right that but they 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 got they they got manipulated they got exploited right and they got you know tricked and duped over the idea that that they 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 will you know they, in the end they they will become equal uh, you know in this independent 
the end they will be the but on the other hand they will still they still they are the second class citizens and the whole you know the whole the mother forest and in the end she was you know talking about the construction of the mother forest that how the mother forest right the the mother forest of the wayanar the the wayanar uh, forest uh, area the vernal forest area and how these forest areas were actually you know transformed into the big big resorts and the tourist places right even if you uh, you know uh, if you uh, search it and uh, and you learn about the wayanar's forest area right so there was even a minimal charge to you know, visit the area so you could you could see you could you could you know in now we can uh, even think and imagine right so you could see the colonial setup that how in order to you know go to your own land you really need to you know pay a minimum fees the same way right so i have already given you the example of the plight of the migrants as well in order to go back to your own city in order to go back to your own country in order, in order to go back to your own home right that is somewhere in your own country right you really need to pay a minimal fees right so that the basic trains were not available right for for, for and basic uh, facilities were not available uh, so, so so that they can easily and simply go back to their place right so the same way uh, in the end she was concluding that how the wayanars right the how the wayanars forest area which was actually their home their abode and which was actually you know the mother forest for them but in the end it it it, it was transformed into the how it was transformed to big resorts and the tourist places in order to attract more and more people and in order to earn money that's it right and uh, and uh, the people right so who, even the people who gave the and first they uh, you know, first they robbed their home on the other hand even they robbed their identities right so that the you know the, that that is a kind of a double operation that right so not even their uh, fo- uh, home was forcefully taken from them but on the other hand even their identities right even they uh, they lose even their identities were looted right so because uh, earlier because when they were living in the mother forest they were living in the forests of uh, in the forest area of uh, wayanar but on the other hand and uh, you know they, they they put two hostels they 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 put two campaigns they put two you know different different kind of a places where they will be given you know, where they give the promises of education and you know liberation emancipation and equality but on the other hand in the end they they they, they, they got nothing at the hand because of the you know so called you know the nationalist uh you know on the name of the you know constructing a nationalist democratic country even they lost their identity that was very much there in the forest and uh, they, you know the these civilized people right so this is the civilized word they robbed them uh, of his identity of his heritage of his cultures and in the end these these scheduled tribes right so by listing them as scheduled tribes in the end they simply become the agricultural laborers right so that was all about you know the the the, the whole construction of the mother forest right i hope this much is clear and you, you yes, enjoyed, uh, i hope you enjoyed the text right so yes ma'am Right, it has the same, you know, eco-feminist uh, connotations, right? The Adivasi movement, right? So, a- a- any questions you have, Shushmita? No, uh, ma'am, I understand. Okay, and uh, I would like to, you know, have two, three lines from you. So, what's your idea of Mother Forest? How do you perceive Mother Forest? And how? Ma'am, do- okay, continue. Uh, ma'am, uh, Mother Forest is all actually about uh, the love of uh, tribals for forest. Yes. And uh, the pol- uh, and in the name of economic development, uh, or in the name of uh, uh, facilities, how political system is destroying uh, the 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 forest. True. Very much true. And right? harming the uh, and harming lot of resources. so uh, what's your take on you know the tourist places the tourist places the natural retreats and the you know resorts built in uh, you know in, in, in uh, you could say even in the south india and even in the you know even in the himachal uttarakhand so so what's your take on that how how do you perceive them ma'am tourism is a very important part of uh, the economy uh, but i believe that uh, just for economic development it uh, it is not okay uh to you know disturb the nat- natural resources to uh, it, uh destroy the natu- natural beauty uh and made uh, you know dams are built uh, and there are so many things that are uh, you know that that are built for uh, in the name of the facility for man 
okay uh, i totally agree with you right so even the construction of the social media nowadays if we can see that so the whole construction of social media it, it was actually you know the uh, the capitalistic order the so called consumerism that the capitalistic order promotes and you 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 must have seen that that how in all over the social media the 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 the, the yolo principle that you only live once right so they were actually yes. you know, they were actually you know they powerfully they were they were uh, they were and dictating people that 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 you only live once you just have one life and you have to travel to all the places right so you have to travel all the places and how they are actually you know promoting the you know the tourism and specifically these as i have already told the capitalistic order right so somewhere one influencer or the other right any 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 one even the layman you know we where wherever we go we, we used to put pictures right and people used to ask us that where you were staying where you just you know there were, uh, 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 what places you, you visited right Right? We really, they really want to you know know the summary because they they, they want to plan their trip accordingly right so even the yes. influencers they are promoting certain uh, certain uh, hotels certain restaurants certain yes. uh, tourist places and because they got paid by these people right so they are promoting certain resorts as well even right they 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 got you know they got the entry easily they got all the facilities easily they they got paid for the promotion and for the advertisement but yes. but they are actually you know manipulating us right so the whole construction yes. of the tourism and the, and the whole construction of the social media the social media influencers that how they 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 are promoting tourism is 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 is, is much more of a you would say that it is actually capitalist economy right that that promotes uh, in the tourism that promotes the you know the, the economic development rather than the you know the protection of the forest and you could say that wherever you go right so nowadays uh, wherever even especially you know where the people you know who belong to literature because we have we have a sensitive heart uh i i i don't know about others but still i feel that the those who actually you know read literature uh, they they have the sensitive heart right so uh, yes. they, and uh, wherever you go you you feel that that this is not natural right yes. and and, yes. How, and how much how much this is man made right and how and in order to in order to portray uh, it uh, as a natural resource as a natural resort or an, as a natural setting how man has invaded the natural setting and it 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 actually can you know he actually converted the whole setting into man made and advertising it as a natural Resource, right so it is yes. all about you know the invading of the you know conquering of the man of all the natural resources which is basically an exploitation right and the, the that was a clear charge that should be laid against the man right the modern man right uh, that that it, it was all about the exploitation of the natural resources that we we will be having and uh, on the name of two women on the name of anything right so i hope this much is clear so i would like to yes. continue my lecture right so we will be discussing quickly a poem by nirmala putel right so nirmala putel uh nirmala putel was actually a, you know a major tribal poet we were we, we have already discussed about you know sikh jano she was also a you know tribal feminist thing goes with nirmala putel she was actually a major tribal poet uh, in the 1990s and she lived in a village in the jharkhand that is the kurwa village and right now she is currently you know she is actually managing a ngo that called jeevan rekha right so same kind of views that sikh jano had she uh, shares the same ideas perceptions and you know the, the same uh, views she had about the nature that how uh, you know the modern man how the modern society the contemporary you know the, the contemporary uh, nation the contemporary society they, they robbed them of their uh, of their identity and how the tribal women they 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 are they are doubly oppressed right they are doubly marginalized right so first on the name of women and second definitely on the name of you could say uh, uh, on the name of tribe right so because they are living in the forest on the name of tribal and on the name of women right so tribal women is definitely their double marginalization rather than becoming the celebration of a distinct identity so there was no inclusivity that she was talking about right so she was talking about that there was no inclusivity or celebration right of a tribal women but on the other hand wherever right so she was talking about the, that uh, uh, wherever tribal women right wherever we talk about the tribal women right the whole construction of the tribal women that everywhere she is ridiculed mocked at and the whole construction was there and the the, the, the more only motive was there to portray her as an exotic being 
right? So uh, by portraying her an exotic being, right? So even when we think about it, right? A dark skinned woman, right? Having a minimal clothes, a lush body, a full lush body, right? And uh, she, she, she is not aware of the, you know, uh, of her, her sexuality. And she certainly finds, you know, she certainly we find uh, her as bold, right? A bold, uh, uh, a bold uh, woman, right? And uh, uh, on the other hand, you know, with a distinct woman, right? What we have, the feminine woman, what we have, the elegant and graceful woman, right? So in order to, you know, we, 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 we at first, we, we sharply draw a contrast, right? So we, we draw a contrast and, and, and this the, the, the othering of the woman, right? So this is also a form of othering of the tribal woman, right? So by portraying them as, a, uh, as an exotic being, right? So by portraying them as exotic beings, and uh, we are also you know, dehumanizing them, right? So by poaching them, that that, that say they, they they are something exotic, right? There, there is something exotic about it, and and they are not at equal with us, right? So the same thing that she was questioning in the poem, right? So we will be discussing the poem. Uh, I am going to share the screen because I'll be reading the text. It will be very difficult to you know uh, to uh, you know uh, to uh, paraphrase or to discuss the poem without the text. And we haven't discussed the poem in any of the lecture, right? I tried to one, but on the other hand, the day we were discussing the Tabhagat's play, and then we discussed two short stories. I thought of even discussing one poem, but because of the you know time constraint, I was not able to do that. That this was the reason I would like to you know uh, I really want to uh, conclude today's lecture by over the poem, right? So let's just quickly jump to the poem. I'm sharing my screen. Uh, I hope then you are will be able to you know, see the uh, text, right? Uh, just uh, give me a moment. I hope you are able to see the text now. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right. So today we will be talking about "If You Were in My Place" by Nirmala Putal. Right. So we have already discussed enough about Nirmala Putal that how she is a major tribal poet, and right now she is actually, you know, currently working, uh, managing an NGO named Jeevan Rekha, and she was, you know, questioning about the mis, uh, you know, misrepresentation of the tribal. So here she was actually talking, you know, she uh, she was actually questioning that if you were in my place, right? So if you were in my place, then what would be your reaction? How 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 will you react? How will you respond to such kind of you know humiliation? How will you respond to such kind of a you know disrespect? How will you respond to such kind of exploitation? Right. So she was not even you know she so her poem is not about the celebration of the tribal woman or celebrating the inclusivity of the tribal woman. So here she was questioning about the world view. Right. So the Walter Shang we we discussed earlier the Walter Shang about the tribal woman that how she was ex how she is an exotic being. Right. Rather than rather than you know, a, a simple human being like us right so she i i uh, i'm reading right so if you were in my place by nirmala putal i hope there is no need to zoom the screen uh, shushmita you are able to see yes ma'am can i zoom it uh, no ma'am okay so uh, i i'm starting right so just think if you were in my place and i in yours how would you feel, right? So the first, you know, the first stanza is, is you see, she is she is actually, you know, challenging the world view. She she is asking us, uh, you know, she is asking from us that that how will you feel, right? Just think if you were in my place, that she is, you know, she is by she is just challenging the people's view. She is challenging the misrepresentation that that what will you think, right? Let's change the place. She 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 was actually you know, changing about the reality. She was actually you know, changing, you know, talking about. You know, uh, shifting the sides that just think about if you were in my place and I in your, how would you feel, right? How would you feel if your village stood in the lowlands of the distant hills and you lived in huts of grass and straw? Right next to oxen, cows, goats and chickens and pigs, the anxious light of lambs about to flicker out. Forced to see the faces of children whimpering from hunger, how would you feel, right? So, so in the stanza so she was actually talking about the dehumanized conditions right the hardships right the the the, the, the kind of the, how they were actually struggling with the basic things so she was actually asking that how would you feel if your village stood in the lowlands of the distant village right so he was so you know it very well that the lives in the hills uh you know the life life in the hills is actually very much difficult right it, it was very challenging and very difficult for 
for you know and she, she was you know asking the same question that that our life is already full of adversities and hardships we really need, need to you know, toil so much we really need to uh, you know have so much of hard work right and you lived in the huts of grass and straw that you don't have the you know you don't have well maintained houses you don't have the luxurious houses we you know on the other hand you can see a sharp contrast between you know the kind of nature we we, we think about it right whenever we think about the hill stations whenever we think, uh, think about you know north east and even when we think about you know south india so there are there are very pleasant pictures as we already talked about you know that we thought about greenery and even when we thought i mean we thought about you know a, a small you know a, you know a, a small village as uh, you know a small villagers life right the village life the tribal life right we trying to you know put it in a way in a very exaggerated way that how it is going to be a fun it is going to be an adventure but on the other hand what what seems to be fun and adventure for us it is actually harsh reality for them right so how how uh, is their you know is is their life and 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 their how their lives are you know full of uh, you know hardships and adversities right so she was asked actually asking that that if, if you were in our place only then you are able to realize our suffering only then you are able to sympathize with our suffering only then you are able to you know feel our plight that that how we will feel when we have to live in the huts right so we were talking about the progressive india right so you know we we were talking about the you know progressive india the lifestyle of the india that how we 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 are you know we are developing country right so we are one of the developing countries of the world that we you know uh, you know we were talking about refiles we were talking about you know cheetahs we were talking about so many things but on the other hand these are also the people these are also the natives of india these are also the citizens of india they were actually living in the huts of the straw and grass right right next to the oxen cows goats and chickens and pigs the ancient sights of the lamps about to flicker out right so they really need to you know, live in utter poverty and there they have the oxen their cows their chickens their pigs right so they have their you know their own pet animals and there were so many things and sometimes right they even they have to sacrifice these people right they have to sacrifice their you know their pet animals and sometimes they really need to you know Uh, so 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 the the, the plight is 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 much more uh, you know it, uh... And it is much more aggravated when she was talking about the ancient nights a light of the lamps about to flicker out on the other hand so these lights of the lamps that are the, the, there are there is no power there is no electricity you know it very well you know the, how much hard life is in the you know in the hilly areas in the tribal areas right so so she was talking about the light of the lamps about to flicker that even it, it can be a metaphor of the eternal darkness that pervades in their life right so it was not just about the lamps at the night right so she was talking about the anxious light you know anxious light of the lamps that that that, that for that for you know, it, it has been centuries that they are living in the darkness right the eternal darkness that right the internal darkness was you know that 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 is what pervading their lives that how they are living in the utter you know poverty right forced to see the faces of children whimpering from hunger how would you feel right so on the other hand being a tribal woman she has to you know toil a lot she has to you know work in a very you know a, you know a, a, you know in a very much hard way to 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 earn a, a living and and to to uh, earn for the children right but on the other hand in the end she was saying she's to forced to see the faces of the children right so we, so we have seen our face are the children you know are the faces of our children right so we have seen the visages of our children right so they were crying they were whimpering for the food because we don't have enough food to serve them right so how they are living in the utter poverty and how there is a you know, how there is a shortage of food and they are not able to you know give food to their children and and they are actually you know whimpering they are crying they 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 they, they are you know they are they're, they're full of frustration because they 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 are suffering from the hunger right so she was actually you know talking about she and her children right and how they they are forced to you know spend the hungry they do the forced to you know, forced to spend all the nights in in, in you know, with empty stomach they were hungry and then and there was so much of cold then this was the reason that, that she was asking that how would you feel if if you were at our place right if, if you have seen this much if and you know, how, how 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 will you feel right if, if your life will be so much full of you know such hard work uh, hardships and adversities right so this was the reason that and on the other hand 
from two stanzas, right? Uh, you could see that there is a repetition that how would you feel? How would you feel, right? So, so the how would you feel? How would you feel? The, 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 if, if, you, if we, and we uh, analyze the poem in a you know, literal sense that the repetition of the same and same phrase, right? So it, it, it used to highlight and emphasis the poet idea, right? It em emphasis the idea in order to, you know, portray the gravity of the situation that, 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 that you know, the kind of deplorable condition that they have. They, they are actually, you know, living uh, in a totally devastated state, right? So I hope this much is clear. Yes, ma'am. Right. Then we are moving towards Tampa. And then, Shirish, how would you feel if you had to bring your children mouthfuls of water from a spring flowing miles away, or your wife to light the house stove was forced to gather firewood and bring it from the jungle? And you, to keep house and home, had to break rocks or spread coal tar on the road, or even early in the morning, had to howl bundles of firewood on your rickety wreck of a bicycle just to manage to get basics like salt or oil, right? So the same thing, the same idea that she was continuing that how, right? So how they have to struggle even for the basic and basic necessities, right? So she was again, you know, questioning. She was again questioning the mainstream society, right? The mainstream society, the the the, 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 the nationalist society that that who, who are possessing that we all are one. We are all the natives of the you know one you know one civilized democratic country, right? So she so she was asking those the those people that that how would you feel if you were in my place and you have to you know, serve your children you have to you know and you have to struggle so much in order to meet the basic needs right and if you had to bring your children mouthfuls of water from the spring going miles away right so she was saying even you know the basic things what we were talking about the water they have to go miles away not to patch water for the you know for, for for the uh for the children right so the very common images you must have seen tribals that are living in the rajasthan right so the rajasthan people they they have to you know travel miles miles away and then and in order to you know have one bucket of uh, water right so, and on the other hand she was asking what your wife to light the house stove was forced to gather firewood and bring it from the jungle right on the other hand the basic thing you know, what we have have the quick those stoves, we have the inductions, right? At our home, we are comfortably sitting at our homes with so many, you know, modern equipment. And she was questioning that that it would be, you know, just you know, you know, to light fire, you know, to, to just light the house stove. They just have the house stove in order to light it. They were forced you know, to, to walk miles and miles away to collect the firewood, right? First they collect the firewood, then they put the firewood, and in, in this way they will light fire and then they will have their food cooked over the house to and we have to go to the jungle right we have to go to the jungle but on the other hand the more, more and more invading of the man you could say and as i be yesterday we were discussing about it how government was actually you know criminalizing these tribes and you know trying to get control over forest areas and you know mapping the forest areas and you know, terming there, you know, if for example, if they are going to you know patch firewood, and they were saying that it is not your right to patch uh, firewood, right? It is not your right. It is not your legal land, right? It is, it, it is not your land. You are destroying the resources, and you know? they are making sensitive areas, sensitive forest areas. They are actually you know mapping the areas and saying the forest areas as the forest services. So she was saying that here we have to struggle. Here, here we have to struggle so much in order to get the basic, you know, the, the basic necessities, and they we have to go to you know miles and miles away for water and for the jungle and you to keep house and home had to break rocks or spread coal tar on the on the road on the other hand he was saying in order to keep house and home on the other hand in order to earn a, earn a living uh, earn a living we have to break the law uh, rocks we have to you know we have to do the tilling we have to breaking the rocks we have to you know we have to uh, you know, take the pity job, petty jobs of you know becoming the laborers, right? The laborers for the state, for the laborers, and spread the coal tar on the road. On the other hand, you know, such kind of a petty jobs we have to, you know, we have to adopt only because we don't have any other, uh, we don't have any other, you know option than this right so we have to you know ultimately resort ourselves to do this petty job in order to you know earn, uh, earn a living for us for our home for our children right or even even early in the morning had to howl bundles of firewood on your rickety wreck of a bicycle just to manage to get basics like salt or 
oil on the other hand shape is a very common thing right so you have to put all the things on the bicycle in order to sell it in order to you know, exchange it on the name of barter system just to get the basic things like the salt or the oil right so there was a time right i would like to quote one more example that you know our you know our bapu the father of our nation mahatma gandhi you know went on foot and and he he, he was the first one who challenged the salt law right by making yes. the salt by then you know, by by, by uh, 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 on the his way to the dandi right by you know yes. by dandi march he 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 actually you know he, he break the rule he broke the rule of you know salt the salt law because he knew it that it was you know the, one of the basic necessities salt is actually one of the basic necessities and he knew it that if 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 law if 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 this law will continue to flourish it is going to be a destructive you know one of the destructive laws of the society right because uh, you know it uh, you know and because of his you know the the such a brave and applaudable effort this is the reason that today we have salt just of uh, 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 in in rupee 20 or 25 i but this i i guess this much is the only cost of tata salt i i believe the uh, you know the big packet of tata salt right the only yes. you know, so this was the reason that the, the 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 lowest price the reasonable price i would say that the reasonable price that we we we, we will be grateful to definitely to our mahatma gandhi right to to, to our bapu that because of you know his his, his long long vision because of, because of his far sightedness because of his strong vision and because of his bravery and resilience right that he showed at the face of the colonial masters right we are able to get salt at these naval prices and if 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 they continue if if, if that law continues so 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 we can actually you know you know think of of a dystopian you know uh, a, a dystopian a society where 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 you know salt will be at the rate of 500 per kilo or, or or the small packet of salt will be of 500 or 800 and we got even our salt imported from the other you could say other countries right so because of uh, the uh, you know the bravery of mahatma gandhi and then so, so look at it right so there we have the visionaries like that but on the other hand and they were actually you know they they were actually doing these things for for the you know upliftment of the indians right but on the other hand there this even after the independence right even after the 75 years of independence these people are still struggling with the basic things right like the salt and the oil even yeah, that day you were discussing the story of mahashweta devi right so e- even the story named as uh, salt right there there yes. these you know the tribes how they they were actually you know, you know struggling with the salt right they were actually yes. you know, living so much near to the nature they were living in the forest they were living near the rivers they were living near the oceans right and still you know they, they are unable to get the basic things right so their their life their their lives are very much difficult they are full of hardships right they are full of adversity that we, we we cannot even imagine we cannot even think of right so this was the reason that she is questioning that that how would you feel if you were at my place right so uh, let's continue then uh what would you feel if you saw your child running behind herds of cows and goats and some other kid book bag on his shoulder going off to school so now so there she is actually reporting a clear contrast between the tribal children and the you know, the, the, the children of the you know independent uh a country right the democratic country that that education what we believe that right we still believe that the primary education is free all over the country right uh and uh, you know uh, and even uh, even in first lecture I, even i you know even i quoted ramindranath tagore right he in his poem right where the mind is without fear he really want where the knowledge is right he really he was really constructing a nation he was actually you know praying to god it was actually a kind of a document that he really you know ha- he really wants to hand over to his fellow uh, you know fellow indians uh, that that i really want to construct such kind of you know the heaven of freedom and he was talking about that i really want to construct a country i really want to build a country where, you know who will be the freedom or you know heaven of the freedom that where and the one of the characteristic that he was de- defining that is the where knowledge is free right so we were talking about you know the free knowledge that because if the knowledge will be free then only, only then it will be available to all right because if we center you know if, if we put knowledge you know at the center and it and we put in a few few say you know guards around it or even if we put in, in the hands of the few people you know it very well only the haves will have the access to it on the other hands haves haves not will not be having any access to it 
same way she was talking about that though you know the, the we they are promising right these people the the, the people that who were talking about the liberation or emancipation of the uh, tribals they were talking about the uh, you know free education they were talking about education to all right they were talking about knowledge is free right so it will be accessible to all but on the other hand this is the sad reality that that our children they have to run around the hearts of herds of cows and goats right so they have to you know they, 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 they just be the you know they just have to do these things they have to do the you know, petty jobs they have to uh, just be around the uh, cows and goats they have to live you know such such a kind of you know, the kind of a backward life where there will be no you know array of hope of you know progress or uh, development but on the other hand the same way they could they could see that the same way some other kid bag on his shoulder going off to school but on the other hand the same at the same time you know kids are going to school you know they have books and they have bags on their shoulders so 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 that the the construction right the the two, the two contrasting images the hair the children running after the you know goats and uh, cows right so this is so, so they are actually the you know the, the example of uh, you could say the a bleak region of the india right so 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 the we even where the, the children they the, the children have to do these petty jobs right they resort to do some some to do something in order to earn a living in order to get their stomach full but on the other hand these kids then that the, these kids are actually you know they they are they will be the ultimate voice of the india they they, they will be the, you know progressing you know leaps and bounds and they will be having a good career they will be living leading a good lifestyle right so though the, the the all the you know promises of education you know and the knowledge and you know, it is that that it, that will be given to all the children right but on the other hand the 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 distinction is that that the, even nowadays right the education is just centered to few people right in the hands of the few people you must have seen that that how you know uh, nowadays all the you know the, the big exams right the, the 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 people who are cracking that those who are actually you know studying and are actually having big big you know coaching centers and you could see that nowadays even you know students who are actually you know compromising with their plus 1 and plus 2s right so they are not going to schools but they are preparing for iits but they are preparing for neat right and they are you know, studying in the coaching center and they used to get a dummy admission in the college, in the, in the school right and same goes with the college right so i i am i am myself teaching in the college where right? i have seen a lot of students right so they are not turning up to the classes but on the other hand and if if, if we ask them that that where, where where were you and they then simply you know give you the reason that ma'am i have you know, i have joined an uh, ias class right so the only uh, the, the, this is the typical term that we got to know that okay that he or she is preparing for the competitive exams right so this is how you got to know that that that, that they right so look at it that the whole you know you could see the you know the, even the commercialization of the education you could see right so here the, the, these two you know contrasting images portray the same thing that the, it is it talks about the commercialization of education that how even you know because of the that how education is also just you know just in the hands of the haves right it just uh, centers in uh, at the hands of the powerful right only the powerful has the access to you know to the to the to the education and and to the knowledge and you must you know you must have seen the pictures right in the tribal areas in the hilly areas that how you know the small small kids the these these small children they have to walk miles and miles right sometimes they are crossing a small river sometimes they are you know just to just you know they they are smallly taking baby steps on 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 a bamboo uh, uh, on a bamboo bridge right so by you know fighting with so many adversities right sometimes they are taking 40 minutes walk sometimes they are taking you know one hour 20 minutes walk sometimes two hours walks in order to reach the school right so this this in order to have the basic you know, the, the basics of the education right so that that is all about the alphabets and all about the numeracy right so just for the numeracies and the uh, numeracy and the alphabets they have to struggle so much right so that, that the whole idea then the contrasting pictures talks about the commercialization of the language uh, education that she was talking about right so how would you feel if you know the, the privileges you got that will be taken from you and you have to live life like us right the very ordinary people right and still they will be not treated as ordinary right so they they, they will be treated some you know below uh, as the ordinary man right i hope this much is clear yes ma'am right then just think what would you feel if i sat there squarely on a chair instead of you sipping tea with a couple of friends and you stood by yourself in front of me your hands clasped politely begging for some work beetling and winning in your sick little language right 
So on the other hand, uh, in uh, you know, in the first four stanzas, she was actually talking about their diversities, the hardships of the tribal life, and now she was actually you know switched to the point of view you know, of the another woman, right? So she was actually you know talking about a woman who was actually you know. Uh, you know, looking for a job in the small town, right? So the uh, earlier paragraph was talking about that how you know, travels are living, you know, a, a very difficult life, and how they, you know, they spend their lives in a very, in, in, in a very difficult way, and talking about the sad lives of their children. That even the, their lives are so, uh, you know, even their even their lives are hard. You know, uh, they, they, they will be at the brunt of this. But on the other hand, there is even no hope for the future because their children are suffering from the same thing, right? So it also portrays the sad lives of the children that there is no hope for future for them, right? If they continue to live in the train, they continue to live in, a, in 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 such areas. The only the only option that they have is that they they have to move out, right? They have to move out to the cities, right? So you can have a clear, you know, you can have a clear similar image with the migrant workers as well, right? They they have a lot of work in UP and Bihar, though they will not come to you know the the other cities. You know, they, they, there is no need of migration that if they found if they will easily find employment in their own city and you know in, in, in their own villages and their own you know uh, in their own states right so there is no you know, reason to and just uh, run away from the uh, houses, right? The same way she will feel that that because of the you know condition that there is no hope for the future. Even our student, even our children are you know uh, they they are living you know very sad lives. They 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 are also you know they, there is a picture of the sad lives of the children, right? So this was a reason that there is no other way. We we just have to move out of, of the space, right? We just move out of the uh, our, our, our 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 homeland, and we have to you know go to. Uh, small towns we have to go to cities to to seek for a job right so the in the stanza she was asking that just think what you would what would you feel so so the constant the repetition of the phrase what would you feel what would you feel right so it 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 it, it, it aggravates uh, her situation right so just think what do you would you feel if i sat there squarely on a chair instead of you sipping tea with a couple of friends so definitely she was portraying the you know the the, the image of the modern 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 society right so that modern society you know, with the people who are actually you know the, uh, because of the uh, urbanization mechanization industrialization they are they are having the comfort and convenient life where they are actually you know they they, they have big cafes you know where, 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 where they simply come chill and sit they they often do you know, dining together, they often have parties together. So, you should, so the same way she was asking that if I you know, sat comfortably like you, and instead of you, and I'm simply you know, chatting with my friends, I'm simply you know, sipping tea uh, with a couple of my friends, and you stood by yourself in front of me. And on the other hand, she said that there I have to you know, stand. I have to stand like a right, like a non-existent human being, right? I have to beg. Uh, for a job i have to beg for a job from you right so you uh, stood there your hand clutched lightly you know i have to beg there i have to you know i have to fold my hands i have to beg i have to plead uh, you know, i have to plead you that to to, to, you know, to to allow me for a job begging for some work wheedling and meaning in sick little language right on the other hand sick little language so she was actually you know, talking about the colonial construction of the language because uh, uh, you know the, when we talk about we have already talked about that how in you know, uh, in you know ck john has used the construction of i right by debunking the uh, colonial uh, construction of I in the capital I, right? So even uh, when we talk about the you know, languages, so these tribal people they have their own languages. You know it very well. India is actually a multilingual, you know, multilingual country. Every state ha has, you know, uh, its own uh, language. And even in every state, we have different. Uh, we have different dialects, right? Then then come the part of the accent as well, right? So the same way these tribals they have the you know the simple language. This you know, they have their own. They have their own transcript uh, uh, language, right? Uh, so this was the reason that I have to, you know, I have to, I have to request again and again. I have to plead you. I have to fold hands in front of you, right? So, so here, right? Really, I, I have to beg. I have to beg for the job, right? In your sick little language, right? In your sick little language. So these people, that so on the other hand, you must have seen that that how we used to, you know, you know, we have we used to term these people as uncivilized, right? The people who doesn't know, you know, the basic courtesies and the mannerism, right? So so, so we used to term that these people are savage, that they don't know language, that they don't know how to communicate. So this was the reason that she was using sick little language. 
this is how we used to say to these people that they don't know any etiquette they don't know any mannerism they don't, they don't know any kind of a courtesies of the language right so she was asking that that uh, well, what would you feel if, if you would be at my place the kind of humiliation i feel at every you know, at, at every moment when when i stood in front of you right uh, and then uh, in the next stanza so tell me how would you feel when someone's hand pats your back and suddenly starts measuring the flesh on your body or the focus of a camera that wants to take your picture ignoring your tablets centers on the fullness of your breasts right so here she was asking the same she was questioning about as i have already told you that these people they don't have any uh, you know uh, they, they don't have any option just to you know move out in the society so there she was again asking that how would you feel when someone you know someone puts up you know pats your back on the other hand and she was talking about the time you know so, someone who tries to you know, uh, encourage you you know in order to you know manipulate you just to manipulate you just to make you feel that they are encouraging you and they are just petting your back right but in the but 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 in the guise of petting your back you know in the guise of you know um, in the guise of encouragement and in, in the guise of support supporting or advising and suddenly starts measuring the flesh of your body right? so on the other hand she was talking about it, how you know how she she felt you know how she felt harassed right how she was harassed and assaulted that that it's uh, the same hand that 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 was you know patting her back and that was manipulating her you know by professing that that hand was giving her support but on the other hand it started measuring the flesh on her body you know it, it, the, the same hand went down and start you know measuring the body start you know touching the body so 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 this is how she she was you know, you know so she was harassed and assaulted right uh, by the people or the focus of a camera that wants to take your picture ignores your tablets so, so so that is a very beautiful phrase that that she was talking about that so this was all talking you know, she was talking about the you know exoticize exoticizing the tribals right that how tribals were totally you know, you know they, they they were portrayed they they, they were actually you know, caricatured as the exotic beings right so as i have already told you that the tribal women we have the you know the image of the tribal women in the minimal clothes and she was very much open about the you know the the language the body you know the bodily movement the gesture the movement she was very much comfortable about the body because when we talk about you know the sophisticated women right she was she she, she said to be the you know, coy and graceful only you know when she have you know and she went you have to act shy and coy and she have to just you know put a wrap over the uh, sexuality only then she will be termed as you know feminine or graceful lady but on the other hand such kind of a woman right who is very comfortable with the her, you know her sexuality her body right on the other hand and and the, the idea of you know so the the whole camera right so the whole camera is focused on just you know this semi nude body right so the body who will be not you know covered or you who will be not clad according to the societal standards so here he was talking about you know semi nude body so the, how the semi nude body right the ca camera was actually focusing on the body right it, it was actually you know focus, uh, focusing on the semi nude body rather than ignoring your stuff but on the other hand the camera will not capture your hunger right the star lips right the star lips the camera will not capture your hunger will not capture your hungry lips will not capture the you know the capture the, the desperation the you know, desperation of of the eyes right and centers on the fullness of your breast on the other hand the camera will rather focus on the breast rather than on the you could say rather than on the plight that that was on the face. right so she was actually talking about you know the kind of humiliation that she has to be able to move out in the society and the society society will keep on portraying her as an other right the other that that that, that she doesn't belong to the mainstream right and she is definitely an exotic body and not a human being right and in the last stanza uh just uh just think even a little while but think that if in a line you were the very last and i stood at the front of the line then how would you feel and definitely here she was talking about the hierarchies that you got all the privileges because you are living in the in in in, in a society where you know because uh, where you know whose whose very pillars are uh, you know discrimination and in right so we we talk about democracy and we talk about the four you know four uh, pillars of the society that we are the running pillars of the 
democracy but on the other hand there she was talking about right the very pillars are discrimination you know the the, the discrimination the, 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 the social injustice right the inequality right and even even the you know that you could say the and uh, the you know uh, the uh, plight uh, of the, of the uh, tribes right so she was talking about just think of the line that you will be always up you will be always progressing you you are you know you are educating yourself you you are a good lifestyle you are moving ahead in your life and all the other people that are connected to you those who are actually moving ahead and we are lagging behind right we are lagging behind and we are actually struggling with the basic that she mentioned about that you know the basic things for the children right even for themselves and their children right the basic salt or the basic things right and some something else how would you feel if you were black and your boots was flat the soles of your feet full of cracks and because of this someone cracked a joke and burst out laughing then how would you feel right so we were right she should have actually talked about it that skin woman right so she was actually talking about the whole construction of the woman that how the society how the society try portray you know how the society try to portray uh, the uh, the tribal woman right as an exotic being right so as something else how would you feel? so he was like you, you you are also part of the same human beings right so you are also you know the, you are you are the same species you are living on the same same planet you are living in the same conditions right you 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 are also subject to every kind of adversity hardship that that all others are right but but just because you you belong to your certain tribe you belong to you 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 belong to certain tribes you, you you are the tribal woman right so she was saying just because you know the few you know you yourself man made distinctions or man made binaries you know man made standards the beauty standards uh, like i have already talked you know about the you know the, the construction of the idea of the woman right and an elegant woman a graceful woman right about her body and sexuality and the mannerism attitude i the same way way she went like they just because we we have different in color you you say that you, you were black right so just because we have different in color you portrayed us as dark skinned women right you portrayed you you treated our semi nude body you know from 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 a different lens right where you try to sex you know sexualize us you try to you know sexualize us in, 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 into an exotic being rather than treating us as you know as as the same human beings right and and look at the compassion but on the other hand you 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 look at us with full of lust right you know to satisfy your selfish interest right and your nose was flat and the soles of your feet full of crack right so just because the nose was flat right so the you know basic very basic natural you know natural differences right so she was talking about that but on the other hand but on the other hand just because she was black just because her, her, her nose was flat right she was ignored by the society right so she was ignored by the society as some ugly savage adivasi i have already told you right so she 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 was not qualified to be a woman right so she was just a savage she was just a brute right so she is not qualified to be a, a, a woman in our home right for example right so uh, i would like to you know give one more example you know to make you, you know, understand this point that even uh, you you, uh, you know uh, i feel shocked when i got to know that in metro cities now people are asking for you know, education qualification of the house help as well right? they are actually you know, they were actually asking uh, their maids right that what is your education qualification right so you yes. so you do you think that so this is really, really much very much shocking you could say this is really a shock, really shocking a, a revelation for all of us right that they really they really want educated maids at their home because they really want their children right uh, 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 that they really don't want their children to learn you know ugly words a b such kind of a language and on the other hand they really want their maid to you know uh, they really want their maid to be trained in the english so that their, their children are able to talk to them in a fluent english right because these two people they they, they are earning money they are earning lakhs and they are you know they they, they are actually you know uh, they are actually you know doing uh, their work outside right so this was the reason that so look at it uh, so this is really, really a very shocking revelation we have that just because of the a you know, few differences they are pushed to the peripheries and the soles of your feet full of cracks and because of you know and the soles of the feet full of cracks because you know they have they they are you know they they have to live a such you know a life full of hardships right so their feet will you know definitely full of cracks right so they will not be having you know, a beautiful foot you know a beautiful foot you know uh, you know it's a nice you know in any sense they should will be going to have a nice beautiful feminine you know fine body uh, and because of that someone cracked a joke and burst out laughing then what would you 
feel on the other country for that and these people they will taunt you right they will crack the joke about your feet your nose your skin your you know your the 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 the, uh, your, the camera was focusing constantly on the body right they were they were calling you know, cracking jokes over your color they were taunting you they they were actually ridic- ridiculing you mocking you right and and and, and portraying you as something right as, as someone who is ugly someone who is unattractive someone who is savage right so completely you know a uh, contrast so you could say that in the end then he, she was asking that how would you feel right so 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 what well, you know it was actually you know questioning questioning the misrepresentation that how tribal women are misrepresented by the you know the 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 mainstream society and they are you know pushing these tribal women to the peripheries that they, they, they don't belong to the mainstream feminism feminist that they, they don't do to belong to the you know the construction of the women right the whole construction of the pure women or the elegant women right so you could see that that this is you know, how, how the image the the the, the present image that the nirmala patel was talking about right so the present image was totally in contrast with the women that uh, you could say uh uh, uh ckjohn was talking in the mud forest right so she was talking about you know uh, the tribal women as something who is independent who is self supportive who is who's committed right so who is who's very empowered woman because she was so much she was doing so much of hard work right for her own self for her sisters for her kids right so she was the one who is managing all the fronts right but on the other hand so look at it right so even you know, because of the you know, nationalistic you know the the, the the nationalistic you know the parties you know construction of the progressive india the construction of the you know the technological advanced nation the developing country right so look at it the image of the tribal women right when she was living in the uh, when she was living in the mud in the lap of the nature when she was living in the mother forest and to the woman who was actually you know begging who was actually begging our so called intellectuals the so called you know the pseudos i i would like to you know use the phrase that pseudo intellectuals right? so we are the pseudo intellectuals the elite people they they have to ask again they have to plead them they have to you know request and they have to beg for the jobs from these pseudo intellectuals right so you could see that the complete contrast uh, you know contrastive image that the ck jano was portraying and nirmala patel was actually talking that how the present you know the present day uh, you know modern state the contemporary india you know, what is the actual face of the tribal women that how you know the tribal women the story you know put to bondage and how they 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 are you know they, they are treated as you know the marginalized groups we were up pushed to the peripheries they were the pushed to the margins and then and then they're trying very hard to 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 belong to the hem of the life right so they're really very hard to belong to the you know the major family right i hope as much as clear that the poem was yes, from from century uh, original by andrean ji and pramod khetiwari and the book right so i'll stop sharing the screen let's get back to the uh, meeting so i hope this much is uh, uh clear shushmita yes, do you have any question so with uh, this we have completed this course right so we will be meeting on 11th right yes, so we'll be meeting on 11th and we'll start with the main course right i hope uh you will read and enjoy and i hope this uh, these five lectures right so the, the, these lectures you know will help you in the better uh, understanding of the dalits and the tribal literature and uh, uh, you know uh, the discourses we have the, the you know the interpretations we we, we share uh, will help you in you know even in your answers as well right so i wish you all the best we we'll meet uh, in the next course right thank you ma'am thank you as well. जी सर जी मैम हो गया जी सर ये हो गया है नेक्स्ट अब 11 को होगी नेक्स्ट क्लास ठीक है सर हां ठीक है मैम जी थैंक यू सर ओके थैंक यू मैम